So hi everybody, I'm Ross Finman, um, co-founder and CEO of Escher Reality. Uh, so we're a company actually just moved from Boston to Silicon Valley this past week. Um, the weather is much nicer out here. Um, so we make mixed reality uh, easy for game, de game developers on any mobile device. So essentially we solve a lot of the computer vision and AI problems so that developers don't need and get a, spend n years getting a PhD because that's its own issue. <laughs> we can talk about that later. Uh, so this is kind of a view of what we imagine the world is. Like gamers, they really advance the cutting edge of technology moving forward. So then how do you get like mixed reality out there? Enterprise, they're going after and spending a lot of money on hardware-oriented devices. Um, if you want to go in the mobile space, that's really going to be driven through the consumers. So you need to work with the devices that are currently out there. There's really wonderful work done like by Google Tango and uh, like with the Fab 2. Um, but again, getting the devices out there to get the game developers to kind of build off of the systems, you really need to work off of the current devices. So like who we are, we are academic and industry uh, experts who have actually like launched products to millions of users throughout various companies. Um, we joined together about a year ago um, based off of some of the academic work um, that I've done through at MIT and some of my, my co-founder, um, data science work in industry, um, and we formed the company. And then, uh, yeah, so you can have the pedigree there. So one of the things that I really want to talk about is a lot of people when they think about mixed reality, they really take the same look that they have for PC and mobile. It's essentially this pattern recognition of, hey, you have uh, solitaire in PC, then you do solitaire on mobile, and then like, but what is that really in mixed reality? It's really a different way of thinking about the world. Now, I want to be more concrete about that because a lot of people are saying that throughout the conference here. So what does that actually mean? So if you want to think about how we looked at um, kind of computation before, it's really this idea of humans adapting to computers. We learned how to type. We learned how to use a mouse. We learned how to like input data into spreadsheets. But really, once you start to get into uh, mixed reality, you're actually kind of trying to bypass the computer. It's really getting computers to adapt to the world. Now, it's a very subtle distinction, but it actually leads to very profound technical and business consequences. The whole idea of what low-hanging fruit is in mixed reality is very different because of this one concept. So in reality, you want to have, like, the computer should not even be noticed. Like, our goal is to kind of remove all the technology. So there's this wonderful logo um, by Boston AR of kind of how we've developed and evolved over time and then how even the technology is evolving. So then as we begin to use mixed reality more and more, like we're going to be starting to go from this hunched over, which I call like adapting to computers, to actually having the computers begin to adapt to us. Now, let's be more concrete about this. What does this actually mean? So what about developers? How should they be thinking about mixed reality content? So if you want to think about, you have like the old ideas of like, hey, you have Pokemon, you even have the staged Pokemon Go, where even though it's a simple AR overlay on top of the world, doesn't actually understand that there's a toilet there or that it could sit on it and do its business. But then if you want to think about when you're developing games for the next generation, um, for the developers, you really need to begin like interacting with the world. So then here you can actually have, this is our system, um, quick little demo of it. So then this is our animator Basil. This is an app we call God Mode just for fun. So then you actually need to understand the 3D geometry of the world and then be able to incorporate that back into the game. Now what this means from a game development standpoint is the world model, as people have currently been using it, er, for like virtual reality or mobile gaming and everything else, that's been predefined and pre-built beforehand. Once you get into mixed reality, like you need to adapt to all the different changes, changing aspects of the world. So then when you go into a new room, like the room can change. People move objects around. How do you actively begin to adapt to the dynamics that naturally occur within the world. So you also need to incorporate the world. So this was a little demo built up by some students at MIT um, where you can actually mine color from the world. So the resources that you get from the world are actually uh, the colors around there. So you want more gold, you can put it more post-it notes and uh, kind of place them around in there. So these type of dynamics come back 
into the game and they begin to uh, affect the gameplay and the game dynamics, which really gives kind of new gameplays. And actually, what you can do with mixed reality, particularly with a mobile phone that you can't quite do with a see-through headset, is you can begin to modify the world. You can change the video feed that you get in there if you know some about the context of the world. So this is actually my uh, co-founder, Diana. So then her little avatar. And you can, from your knowledge of the world, as you're beginning to reconstruct it, you can even begin to modify it, change it, and like kind of move things around. So there's actually this concept that we have when we're giving demos, like we have a cat that runs around the floor, and then people are like, oh, can the cat move the cup? And the cup is in the real world, and the cat's just on the screen. But then it kind of gets this illusion there. So then uh, we call it like the telekinesis goal. And we're like, yeah, of course. It'll, it's on the, it's on the uh, horizon. And then uh, you never say when, because, well, startups. <laughs> so just to kind of wrap up um, with kind of the main concepts here. So like mixed reality, it's a very hard problem. It's a lot sooner than people realize in terms of, OK, you can actually have this on mobile devices. You can really get people to demo it. And we're happy to show demos later. This is not just showing up videos on a presentation. Um, come by to any one of the three of us that are here today. And then we can show you this happening in real time. So it's really a new paradigm where computers are adapting to the world. Again, if you can keep thinking about it in this way of what is the what's happening in the world and thinking about less of humans adapting to computers. Very, very important from a developer and even uh, other startups that are working in this space. So they also need to incorporate the world, begin to handle the changes, the colors of the world, the geometry, and then it really has a lot of new game mechanics that you can really build off of it. So it's not just the same connect three or even like swipe and like an Angry Bird style. You have completely new game mechanics that can, uh, um, that users can um, kind of develop off of and build. And then we're kind of solving a lot of the computer vision and AI problems that you have in order to get those style. So with that, uh, or I guess we'll, we'll be launching soon. Um, and if you're interested in it from a developer standpoint, um, or just more, a uh, little bit more information, you can contact us um, f with information from our website. So thank you very much. Awesome. Oh. <clears throat> ah. Where do you plan to use, um, can someone elaborate on that? I mean, in, in the world on mobile phones. Uh, <laughs> yep. Please type it. I'm kidding. <laughs> Only with gaming? Gaming is usually the first industry that adopts new technology. Like gaming and marketing, they're really at the cutting edge. Um, we'll push it. Um, they really like the concept of new. New actually has measurable quantities. So like the CPI, cost per install of gaming, that's how they kind of measure. If you have something new, you can stand out. So differentiation matters a lot. Like once you get beyond gaming, then there's a whole lot of applications. You want to go into like assembly. You want to go to instructions. You want to go into visualizations of products. Um, a lot of, there's many, many more applications, which there's so many talks out here. So I won't even begin to list them all. But then like, if you want to get, who are the really, really passionate people who are going to spend 12, 14 hours a day really working on the new cutting edge? Like, you can see the number of new uh, gaming companies that have gone into virtual reality. Now, they've suffered from the problem of, like, there aren't as many devices out there, so then monetization becomes an issue. But, like, gaming is where we at least view where you can get the most traction at the beginning. We have, we have nice longer-term plans that we can talk about at another point. Awesome.